Hello, Acron fans! Welcome back! This is the final finals of the Acron 2012 Christmas tournament that was hosted by Rockmox from the 21st to 23rd. And this is it. This is the absolute last best of three series, Kron Averett versus Ferreter. Both players doing very well throughout the tournament, though Ferreter... Actually, Ferreter basically building himself back up. He lost early on, as we can see, in the second round of the first start part of the brackets, but fighting his way up through the loser's bracket and getting himself into a position to possibly take this entire series, having won the last best of three, putting himself in a position where either player loses and the game is ser the series is over, so Ferreter can win two games. The next two games, or two of the next three games, he will win the entire series. If Kron Aberrant does, then he will also completely win the entire series. Kron Aberrant, on the other hand, has not lost a game up until the finals. He was completely undefeated up until then. So this is going to be very exciting, very tense, and we are going to be starting on the most cliched map at this point of the tournament, Hills. So Ferreter starting in the bottom left corner of the map, Kronemer in the top right corner. Not sure what either player is going to do. This is game one, so there is really any amount of flexibility. If you lose this, it's not a huge deal. You can still work your way back up from the next two matches, but we'll see. I expect there to be an all-in on this one, because Hills... Hills is all in country. You have four entrances to the main base. You have so many different paths around here. You have pretty much every area has a couple paths into it. And it's such a small map with the start locations fairly close together that the movement time for all ins is not enough for defenders advantage to kick in. So basically, I expect these players to be going all out. At least this first game, just because, like I said, it's game one of three. Either player can lose this and continue on to win the tournament, so there's really not as much pressure, though, of course, if either player loses two matches, they are completely out there in second place, and their opponent gets the gold. So, Kronheimer looks like he's going for earlier RPs. He had some Octos headed out, but those appear to have been echoed out completely. No, they aren't. Never mind. There are still two Octos going along. So, Kronheimer scouting out very early on. Still has his early RPs, but scouting out quickly, double-checking what Ferreter's up to, not even seeing Ferreter after he's chosen his species. Ferreter... He has also gone Grecken, but Kronheimer doesn't even know what he's up to, because it hasn't propagated yet. And once it does, though, then Kronheimer will have some idea what's going on, but Kronheimer now just attacking the species selector to really no avail. Ferreter is building up a bit more economically, sending his own Octo out to scout, but nothing major, nothing huge has happened thus far. No player really going for anything too risky, though Kronheimer does have an Octo to the north that will be able to... Or he had an Octo to the north, it looks like it might not have been there, ultimately. It might have been echoed out. He did have an echo up. What the? Whoa. Did Kronheimer just change to CISO? I think Kronheimer just changed to CISO. This is backwards. Normally, you'd, you'd play Grekim... When you're playing Grekim, if you wanted to have the really easy scouting, you'd, you'd bluff CISO and then pick Grekim, but no, it looks like Kronheimer is, in fact, going for... Grekim to see so. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be a bug. He is in fact going for two importers, two RPs. Wow, okay, this is this is an all-in. He's proxying a factory, he's building ATHCs from there, maybe even Lancers, but probably ATHCs, and he's just going all out. Here's another import he three importers early on. You know what? He might actually be going for proxy armory and just getting it. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. It's proxy armory, because that is reserve bound. But completely convincing Ferreter he is going for Grekim, and that Ferreter doesn't really need to scout. I think Ferreter might have set up some scouts before, but they, then again, he might just be thinking, oh, well, Kramer's going very quickly for this, for Grekum for an assault on this. Well, I might as well get my Oxpod and just scout, go from there. This is... This is cool! I've... I... Like I said, this is... When I mentioned before about how one to use experimental strategies, this is the game to use it. The first game of best of three, or the second game if you won the first game. Either one is the perfectly appropriate time to use risky strategies like this, especially in the finals, especially after you've already played three games against your opponent, and they know what you're up to, they know the things you're going to do. Throwing a wrench like this in the middle of, essentially the middle of the series, even though it's the first seri first best of three, or first game in this best of three, this is huge. Like, Ferder does not know this is coming. He probably realizes something's been echoed out since the timeline's no longer showing damage, but this is the exact right time to use experimental strategies in a tournament.
If this was a best of three, I mean, if this is a best of five, this would be like after one game for each player. That would also be a perfect time to do a strategy like this, where it's the third game, both players have one win each. This is as well, though, because this is also the same similar idea where both players are simply best of three away from winning. Exact same position and exact perfect strategy or exact perfect time to throw out random strategies like this that your opponent has no idea what's going on and are completely experimental. This is absolutely perfect. So I, I, I'm thrilled. So Ferreter, he has himself set up, he has a reef, he has the Octopod patrolling, he has, he doesn't have his Octo that he normally has helping patrol, but he has an Asepi coming up to help build that. And Cryarmory, yep, that's like I said, Armory, he's building up massive Armory rush, massive infantry rush early on. I... <laughs> that's all I can do is laugh, because this is so bizarre. I would recommend building multiple ar I would have recommended building multiple armies, except it's quite obvious that he doesn't have a lot of LC, and he just needs to build as much infantry as he can. So, really, this is probably fine for the build time, for the build time of units, for the resources he has, although he is queuing up quite a lot. If he didn't queue, he might be able to build a second armory, and that would be good. If he, a second armory would work well with this. The one army, he's queuing up a ton of units that's kind of wasteful on time. But still, this should work out very well. I don't think Ferret has any idea of what's going on. Going on a standard patrol, standard Octopod in here, and has no idea what's going on. Probably expecting there to be Sepi bots coming in soon. And here comes the Octo! Ferret are now figuring out what's going on, but at this point it's too late. There is a dozen infantry just waiting for this Octo, killing it off in a hurry. Ferret are fully aware of what's going on. That he's been completely fooled. Cron Aberrant pulling this on him. And I think Cron Aberrant, yeah, that definitely knows everything, what's going on now. So at this point, he has seen everything, and he's going to start probably attacking with Octopods. Probably just spamming Octopods at this point, trying to do what he can on defense. Cryonimer really needs to go for an attack right now. Well, not that he really can. He doesn't have a lot of infantry with to do so, but as best he can, go for an attack. And it looks like he's not building up with this army as main base, which I suppose is fine. It's not close enough to really help. And here he goes, going in for the assault at the Unplayable Past Edge. There's a Reef coming up. There is a... Another Seppi, but no Octopod here. Cryamarant is at this point in time as well. Sorry, Cryamarant is attacking. Sorry, Cryamarant and Ferret both at this point in time. Ferreter will have to attack this, but this is great timing from Cryamarant. The Octopod is not around yet, but the Octopod is still in position. All the infantry spreading around the map, dealing with damage they can. The Octopod getting distracted by just a few of them, while the rest of them try to take out the Triad and take out units that are coming out from it. Cryamarant not doing anything else in here, just building up more infantry and streaming them in. Getting rid of everything Ferret has built up. Ferret has a lot of money in the bank, though. Crimer does not. Crimer not having a second army near here means he can't stream in the infantry quite as quickly as I'm sure he'd like to. He does have a lot of them queued up. He did have a lot of them queued up. But now at this point, Crimer has no real chrono energy other than what he needs in order to do this attack. Crimer a bit further back. He is more focused on getting rid of the triad. Getting rid of the octo that was in the triad. So no further Seppies or Faros can be built easily. And Ferret still has enough money to build a couple more octos. And he is spending that money on this exact task. But he also has a lot of RP, so really, at this point, Crimer is still kind of ahead with all the damage he's dealing. But the only meaningful damage he's going to deal is getting rid of this tried. And the Faro going down. Ferreter has lost this. If the Faro goes down, that is it. Ferreter does not have his Octopod in a good position to help deal with this. And that Faro is going down. There's no doubt about it. That Faro is done. This Octo is the only thing able to buy time. But even with that, Crimer just needs to move these Marines into position. And that's just one order, which Crimer can easily do. And it looks like both of them just jumping back a bit, and yes, further in the past, Cryonimer has killed that Faro, he will kill the Seppi, and that will be game. Where is... the Arcticus has been killed before too, so there is no way Ferreter has any way out of this. Ferreter jumping back a bit further, but has lost this. Despite what he... despite his best attempts, he is losing that Faro, and without that, that is it. An RP being moved to the front to try to buy time, but not nearly enough. That Faro is gone, the Seppi will be going soon. We keep repeating that section, but yes. Cryonimer has won, he has destroyed everything that Ferreter has. And not even with the second armory. That second armory would have been insult to injury. I think that would have really done it in, though. I would have liked to see that. But yeah, Cryonimer winning this game with a brilliant all-in. A brilliant bluff into an all-in. <laughs> that was cool. That was really awesome. Ferreter looks like double-checking the future, seeing if he has enough money for chronoporting, I guess. But no, he doesn't. He doesn't have any... RPs on QP, so we can't just get chronoporting and chronoport back the Octopod to help itself out. Though that would be a paradox, but 
that's better than nothing. And he is trying for it. He is going for more QPRPs, at least trying to get what he can. But he does not have the time. There, This green time is going to come up here in about 20 seconds or so, like 20 real-time seconds. And that will do him in. That will finish him off. He will be done. So he's long since been defeated. Chronoport's all he has left that he can try to do. Chronoport putting himself in this base, building up here after having destroyed everything. So he's taking over the entire map. And Ferreter trying to do what he can, getting up all the QP he can, but it's not going to be enough. He won't get chronoporting in time. 30 seconds left. Well, 10 seconds left before it's overtaken. Alright, I forgot he's fast forwarding too, so never mind. That was 30 seconds originally, so yeah, he's got about 10 seconds left before he's completely overtaken. And even if he remembers to fast forward here, it's it's not enough. The green time wave is coming over and eliminating everything. Getting advanced structures for the prereq, and it's gone! Ferreter has lost everything, lost all the units, all the bases, everything. Ferreter has lost Crime Rant, winning the first match in this best of three with an absolutely wonderful, awesome, cool to watch strategy. <laughs> I was getting a factory right at the last second, dude, just in case. <sighs> that was awesome. I feel privileged to have watched that game and to have shown it to all of you. Now let's move on to game two of this best of three and see what Crown Aberrant does. If he tries to go for it or Ferreter manages to figure out a good counter, whatever Crown Aberrant manages to do in this case. However, this game is going to be on Kratoria. I don't believe this has come up in the tournament thus far. It has come up in one of the recent exhibition matches. So I did go over it here, but if you haven't watched Akron in a while, you might have seen some of the really old casts of Kratoria. It has changed much since then. Much like Cold Forge, the crates have been massively reduced in number. Also, there aren't any any neutral units blocking off crates in the natural expansions. There are some neutral buildings kind of in the way, sort of blocking off stuff towards the southwest and sorry, south, yeah, south, no, northwest and southeast. My current directions keep getting messed up. Do not ask me to become a GPS; that will not work out nicely. But anyway, these buildings here probably just for distraction. Not much else. They are not allied to either player, I think. No, it looks like they're purely neutral. They are belonging to no player at all. There are teleporters over here, and the teleporters have been moved from the center of the map. They used to be around the center here and here, I believe. Chronoporters are still at the north and south. Still in a giant pit, so it's very difficult to get into them. But overall, this map has been tuned more like Cold Forged, but it's also very large. It is a 320 by 320 map, and it is actually, well, it used to be really good for Grecum. The original incarnation only had slingshots. Now it's, as far as I know, fairly even for all three species. Especially the naturals being fairly open like this. They don't have, you don't have to destroy a bunch of neutral structures, because before that was an attempt to slow down the economy without making it completely crippled. Then we decided to cripple the economy anyway, so it didn't matter. Anyhow. And by the way, remember how I mentioned, I hope you guys like Grecum vs. Grecum. That last game, that was not Grecum vs. Grecum, so I'm a bit glad to see that too, a bit of variety. I don't think that'll happen here though, this map is too large. Much like Act Natural, got corner starts and only one real entrance to the main base. This is a very wide entrance, this this area here is actually infantry pathable, while these are vehicle pathable. So it's a very wide entrance into the base. But it's still only one entrance, it's still a corner base. So it's not going to be easy to harass and easy to get into like Hills is. So I don't expect there to be any all-ins. I expect a mid-game attack. I expect the game to last about 25 minutes, honestly. Probably something mid-game, League of Class, maybe some chronoporting going in here. This is the last game for Ferreter. He's going to really have to try everything. And this is... This is going to be good. Ferreter has to really try his all. So Ferreter going for something economic. Cron Amarant also going for a more economic focus. Both players... Very focused on LC, which is a good idea. LC allows you to get more RPs, and then from there you get more RPs and just build up. Octopod being built up just in case, but this map I think is way too big for all-ins to even be a consideration, so Octopod might be a bit of wasted resources. That being said, the teleporters do provide some means of all-inning, because effectively it means that the bases are actually more like they're on the corners that are adjacent, but still, that's quite a long ways. That's about as long as Act Natural is between the corner bases, is between any nearby corners on Kratoria. So regardless, there isn't a lot of potential for all-ins. There is some potential for meaningful attacks, though. I expect I expect the teleporters to be used a bit, but I don't expect them to be used a huge amount. 
The Chronoporters won't be used at all. They are purely for Grecan, sorry, purely for Cecil and Vecchio, Grecan self Chronoport, and since all races require Gate Tech or Chronoporting in order to Chronoport their respective species version of Gate Tech or Chronoporting, they can't, I mean, to use the Chronoport order itself. They can't even use a Chronoporter without that research. So these Chronoporters can't be used that early in the game. And it looks like Ferreter is also building up, so both players building up their economy. Bit of a slow start. Crime, he has his reef up at the three minute mark, and Ferder not worrying about defense. He is actually he's about a minute down from here, but he is definitely building more economy, which is a very good idea to do. Like I said, it's not likely that an attack is going to be happening. Crime, this is actually when he's building his octopod. So Ferder quite a ways ahead, two RPs ahead in economy. Crime will be able to catch up slightly. You get this RP over here, but really Ferder is well ahead. His RPs are more defensible. They are around fewer crates, which means they won't last as long. But Ferreter still has a bit of an advantage. If he gets QP now, like one or two QP RPs, and then builds advanced structures early on, he will be in great shape. No reefs for either player quite yet, though Crime, I think back further in the future, does have a reef set up. He doesn't have advanced structures yet, but he is able to set up his bubble wrap fairly quickly, getting two more seppies as well, probably for bubble wrap, and turning one of his octaves into a QP RP. So Crime will be slightly ahead for tech spending, but Ferreter still ahead in economy overall. Getting himself a defensive octopod, this is a better timing for getting it. At this point, it's more plausible that an attack would occur. Because you want to get defensive units set up for in case your opponent does an edge attack, or in case they do an, up, an uppercut. Not for what they attack you with quite yet, but what they could possibly attack you with. But on Kratoria, it's unlikely that they could possibly attack you with anything that big this early on in the game, given the size of the map. And... Ferreter, let's see here. We have... Well, he actually has his auto patrolling around quite nicely around the entire basin. So he's going to be able to see everything going on quite wide berth because these RPs, here, these crates here, I should say, can't even be scouted. And Crime could place an Octopod here or something from the teleporter and then slowly move it in near the edge. So it's not a bad idea to do this. However, Ferreter does not have any... Well, he does have a reef just now, but no QPRPs. He really should build some. Crime is starting to get a bit ahead now with the QPRPs. Let's see here. What do we have? He has, well, 5 LC, 1 QP versus 6 LC. So really it's a matter of Ferder building up the QP RPs he needs. And this Octo going over, going over to the gates as well, I think he might just be using it to attack. I don't think he's using it to expand. This is where he should expand if he kills the Comp Center or does a natural expansion, but that will be, that will be safe depending on whether or not Crown Abbott uses the teleport as much. And Crown Abbott sending an Octopod over to the gates, so he will be using the teleport as much. While Ferder sending an Octo to the gates to scout out, teleporting them in. And here's that Octopod, it will be teleporting in right now, getting into the main base. Ferder will find, will not find it actually, just outside of range. No, it is, however, engaging with Ferder's Octopod and will lose. Crimerick can't easily run it away either. It's going to have to slog across the entire map to do so. So Crimerick jumping back about 30 seconds down from here. He is running his Octopod away, not even engaging in battle in the first place. But he does know that Ferder has a defensive Octopod, double checking seeing there is no RP set up in these crates, and Ferder getting two QP RPs here. Crime still ahead in economy. He has more QP. So this is a bit ahead for earlier game tech, but later game development and might be a bit behind. However, since Grecum kind of needs an even amount of QP and LC, it's a good idea to build more QP RPs anyway. And Octo, here we are, the Octo for Patrol that's set up. Ferder's actually a bit ahead of here, but... Where's the patrolling auto? He did send one up. I think he might have actually turned them into an, turned into an RP, which means he can't actually scout out where this octopod is. So Kronheimer has these two crates locked down, but Ferreter does not care. He's focused more on developing crates he has easy access to rather than spreading out, while Kronheimer is spread out more. So Kronheimer will have an advantage in about five minutes when these crates would run out for Ferreter, but not for Kronheimer. I should say about five minutes. Yeah, it seems about right. And Ferreter has advanced structures. He has enough money he can easily get a Spire, he can easily get from there a Sepipod, but he is actually moving his duo over to the Calm Center, not to his natural expansion, so he's not even going for that. Moving along the side here, and I should point out, for infantry it is open on all sides, but really it's for vehicles the two, the two entrances here, so for the most part, not a whole lot of attacks that can come in, but even compared to hills, it's the size of the map is still much larger. And Crime has a dome here as well for defense. 
just in these RPs here, just in case he needs to. Not a bad idea, though. These RPs here in the back are still quite vulnerable. The Reef will heal up, and no Bubble Wrap, which is good to see because there's no real need. There are two Reefs. They are protecting the Triad, but other than that, no real Bubble Wrap. And same with this, only two Reefs, which is all he really needs at this stage in the game. I mean, a third Reef if he suspects a Chrono Rush of some sort, but that's unlikely to happen. Chronomer... Oh, it looks like Chronomer actually got Advanced Structures first, and he used it for the Domes. Has not built a Spire yet, so both players are still pretty even when it comes to getting air units. Actually, Ferret is ahead. Ferret will have air units sooner than Crown Aberrant will. Having a Spire at the 6 minute mark, and then by the 7 minute mark, will have Sebi Pods, but it looks like they happen much earlier. So Ferret is a fair bit ahead here, and Crown Aberrant has some decent defenses, getting Dome Beam upgraded, and he has no Spire, no Sebi Pods. He has no Faros. He has one Faro here. That's about it, but he's still a bit behind when it comes to air units. So the second pod's going to be a bit of a threat if it scouts around the map. Where is it? It is... Hmm. So it hasn't actually shown up yet. It appears to have just been hanging out in the main base for a little while. Attacking the Faropod and well in range, or pretty close to range to get healed up. So this Octopod will be going down easily enough. Crown Aberrant... Crown has to worry now about getting air units. At the 7 minute mark, he still doesn't have them. That Faro is still being constructed. Ferreter could easily get Sebi po or Far Pods from here and then from there just rip apart Crown Aberrant, but I think this map is too big for that to be any real effective timing. It's really just a matter of Crown Aberrant having built up these beams. And the beam domes are still effective. They can still... Two of them would be able to kill a Far Pod, no problem, with their beams. So one Far Pod would die, two Far Pods wouldn't. But as long as Crown Aberrant has vision of them and they're close enough to the domes, which is about 100 units or so. Yeah, range 100. So, it's going to be close enough, it's not going to be a big deal, and with this, I mean, even these three domes together should be able to, this dome might have its line of sight blocked. A bit hard to tell, this mountain here might be blocking the line of sight of that dome. Whereas, Ferreter does not have any stag defenses, he has his octopod and the sepipod that he had built up, the sepipod that he built up going around to harass, and will be finding what's going on here, and there is no beam attack coming in, Cranamert not yet setting that up, he's not focused at this point in time, but he is... Getting close to it, he probably will send the beam up and will fire to get rid of this sepi pod. Only one of the domes is upgraded and it does have energy for the beam. However, instead going for sepis to take care of the sepi pod, that will be enough. This Arctic is actually in a good position to block to help block off far pod attacks, so sepis would be only what he needs. The Arctic is de detecting any far pods that come in. So right now, what Faraday would need to do is just build up an army, build up stuff, get himself going around the map. He has already started to do that with this duo here. Just needs to get rid of the comm center and build up his natural expansion. Build up what he can and then try to win in the mid game when he has a good half dozen Faropods and Sepipods. I know that's a lot of Faropods and Sepipods, but if he has enough money he should be able to build that up without too much issue. And he might actually be building PCMs as well. I don't know if he's going to do that and on a map like this I think he, especially with the setup that Crown Iron has, he'd lose them to domes. They'd be shot down before they even hit. So I don't see that being a particularly effective strategy, but I do see that being a possibility, being that Ferreter has shown affinity for those. Certainly shown that he likes them. And his Octos are in place, likely to kill off this comm center and expand to there. The natural expansion partially expanded to the semi for defense and nothing else being built up. Ferreter getting enough money for Chronoporting if he so chooses. It seems like it might be an option. That's... Sepipod finding one of the domes and getting itself destroyed, or almost destroyed. Ferreter running away just in time. And yes, I would suspect that Ferreter is in fact going for chronoporting. Not enough QP to really make it pay off, but he is going for it. And this is what I mentioned before, five minutes from five minutes ago. We do see the LC crates are almost done, so Ferreter will have to move these RPs over to these crates here, and that will be a bit of expansion time lost. Really should be moving them one at a time over the course of a minute or so just so that he still has a fairly consistent stream of resources, but he's going to be moving them all at once, all six of them at once, I imagine. Not quite as efficient, though he doesn't have a lot of chrono energy to do it any other way. And getting weaponry, he is getting himself set up for PCMs, not for chrono porting, though, which either way I think is a bad idea at this stage in the game, but, you know, if he manages to get a nice edge, a nice edge attack with the PCM and manages to get off the edge of these domes before they manage to shoot it down, he might be able to take out the natural expansion and at least set Crown Aberrant back a bit, but right now, neither player is that ahead in economy, and Ferret will be falling behind once he needs to move these RPs over, which is right now, actually, but he is moving them in small droops. He's not moving them all at once, so at least they are not being moved too heavily, but they are being moved far away, which 
Ah, here we go. They are. Some of them are being moved nearby, some of them are being moved farther away. So it should work out ultimately, but it's a bit tricky nonetheless. And there goes... We have the RPs coming in, and that will be good. He is moving them towards these frontal... He should not move them all the way to the natural expansion. It's going to take way too long. Keep his economy going. Move them to the nearest boxes. His QP crate is still going strong. It should be up for another couple minutes or so, at least. And he has gotten rid of this comm center, getting himself his own domes. So this is a very defensive-heavy map. I've never seen this many static defenses built in an Akron game, ever. This is reminding me of Zero K, actually. Yep, that's that's the game that reminds me of the most, is either Zero K or any Total Annihilation derivative or Spring Engine game, or Spring... Well, Spring Command are a bit, but... Yeah, this is... This is not what Akron normally looks like. This is kind of unusual. Though interesting, I... I really do think that static defenses could stand to be used a little bit more. And they certainly are being effective. They are taking care of the city bots. Even an edge attack wouldn't do too much. And Cryomart apparently has himself sent an edge attack. Though neither player is looking at it yet. And... What the? No, never mind. He's not saying an edge attack. That is... Sorry, that is Ferret attacking the comp center. Sorry, this blue here. Cryomart not taking that damage. That is not against him. But Ferret are not attacking either. And Cryomart will be getting chronoporting. And I think Cryomart will win this. Ferreter has his... He has his weaponry. He doesn't have chronoporting. Chronoporting would be useful for chronobombs, but I think he's just going to use PCMs, at least as a threat, if he sees where he can fire them off and use them effectively. Where is Cryomart researching chronoporting as well? That's, I'm curious about that. And no indication. I don't see. Probably not this front reef. Probably this reef in the back here, and that is well enough to fend it against plasma bombs. He won't. Be, that Ferreter won't be able to get them over there and have them survive. They have to attack in ways, and he doesn't have enough money to do so to destroy this, and then to destroy this expansion or the front base, or not the expansion, but the front boxes, and then to attack the main base. But that would still be 600 LC, 600 QP. Just, I mean, legal class and a bunch of far legal Seppi leaders would be able to take care of that in no time without anywhere near the hassle. Or just far pods, Seppi pods, or a massive amount of octopods just marching into the base with the teleporters. So I don't see PCMs being used effectively, but I see them being used. I'm sure Crown Aberrant is going to have to deal with some PCMs coming up from Ferreter while he expands out. And I think Ferreter... Let's see. Let's count the R, count the RPs. 1 QP, 2 QP, 5 QP, which is almost doesn't count because these are almost done. And natural expansion, that's about it. So 4 LC and... Yeah, it looks like Cryomart is well ahead in terms of economy. He has as much economy, as much RPs active in his main base as Ferreter has across the map from the looks of it. Because Ferreter still has the two RPs in the bottom left corner that aren't active. And here come two Sepipods coming straight into the expansion here, getting hit by the domes. And that's going to be pretty effective. Ferreter also losing one of his Sepipods, or probably not going to lose it ultimately. But he is getting heavily attacked. Crime running them away. And no, here comes a Faro. Actually, it wasn't Sepipod, just a humble Faro. Going in, probably scouting out, figuring out where he can fire off his Plasma Cruise missiles. Probably, like I said, going to try to fire them off. He'd have to fire him off in waves. And I don't know if he's going to do that. He's spending a lot of money on developing this base and protecting it, getting the bubble wrap, getting the domes, getting the RPs built up. This is the right thing to do, but still, I think the purchase of weaponry was a waste. Chronoporting would have been a bit more effective, and Cron Aberrant, having chronoporting, has not used it yet, but he could very easily at any time. He does have... Well, he doesn't have the chrono energy, but he does have the units with which to use it. He knows what's around. He doesn't know the main base at this point is undefended, but he should. If he does, he can just attack that triad and pretty much end the game. Well, almost end the game. This duo is still a threat, but if he knows about this duo, if he scouts it out, he can take that out, and then take out this triad in the main base. Oh no, that's a full-on triad, my mistake. That is a full-on progen triad just outside this expansion here. Cryomart might be suspecting something, but I don't know... He hasn't acted on it quite yet. And Ferreter scouting around, double-checking the nooks and crannies as well, make sure Crown Aberrant hasn't done anything very much like what he's done. So Ferreter right now has got himself a bit better spread out. He has his main base completely exhausted for the easy crates. The hard crates are nowhere near exhausted, but he has to move his RPs away, and he has not done so yet. Nowhere near the Chrono Energy needed to do so. Should actually jump towards the future. Really needs to do that. Like, jump towards the present, and then move the crate, move the RPs from there. And then once the time comes around, then they'll happen. And that should be happening before the, R the crates run out. But Cryomart has not been scouting very well. He is not scouting the nooks and crannies. His Sebi pods are staying in his main base for the most part. Moving out on one big assault on this expansion here, but that won't be enough. Those domes are way too much. Far pods might be able to do it, but octopods would be the thing to use. Domes are great against air, just by default. They, I mean, they're great against anything. And here goes the Chronoport. 
He is trying to chrono port and hit with that in the early pass, but even that might not be enough. The domes without reef support will still, one of them might go down, but that's still way too much. All the domes in here able to take out these Sepipods, and that was a complete waste. Cronabert needs to abort this now, and he is doing exactly that. I don't know if he's gonna abort the chrono port, but he's definitely, no, he's aborting the chrono port too. So he's aborted this entire mission. Good idea, because that was a bad move. But he is, however, going towards the main base. And this is a much, or the expansion here, this is a much better move. He takes out this expansion here and has his own proxy now. So Cronheimer now pulling off a similar trick to what Ferreter had. Finding these RPs, we'll be able to get rid of them, no problem. Might Chronoport back to actually deal with them further in the past as well. But this is a lot of Ferreter's economy here. The rest of it over in the expansion with the comm center, or that had the comm center. So these Sepi pods are dealing quite a bit of damage. And Cronheimer now having to move his... Now finally having to move his boxes, sorry, his RPs over the 15 minute mark. But he's moving them all over, they're not going to be wasting too much time. And he still has a stronger economy, so Ferreter, his only big asset right now is a massive amount of Q-Plasma. If he converts a lot of it, he might be able to build, or fire off all the PCMs he needs. But at this point, it's a little bit late. If he fires one off here, he might be able to kill off the Sepi Pods. But they're still chronoporting back. And after that chronoport, that's going to be quite a lot of damage, so... This is going to be very difficult for Ferreter to deal with, and Cronheimer appears to have aborted that Chrono Board in question, but... No, he's he's clearly going for it. He's got his Sepi Pods right, nicely in place. If he attacks the main base, that's what he needs to do. And Ferreter setting up his own Sepi Pods to help defend, and setting up a bunch of Octos to help defending us this as well. Chrono Board Octo as well, and Ferreter apparently not even realizing that Chrono Board was a thing that could happen, or forgetting about that completely. Not even, hasn't even used a single PCM yet from the looks of it. Nope, and now his main base getting attacked, exactly what I recommended. Chrono Aberrant sending all of his units back to the main base, and not Chrono Ported. No, he has Chrono Ported yet! Attacking the vulnerable expansion towards the front, not Chrono Ported in these rearwards. Sepi Pods, though, he needs to Chrono Ported them back, and now he has. Getting them into the main base, but not attacking, just moving, not attacking that triad. What is he doing? I don't know what he is doing, that was a... Blunder if I ever saw one. Not a huge one though. Cranberry still has an advantage, but he could have killed this triad. Or could have heavily damaged it at least. I don't know what he was planning on doing there. Still, he has his backup triad, and so does Ferreter. So Ferreter still in the position to help rebuild if he gets chronoporting, which he could pretty quickly afford. He would be able to chronoport back and save his main base. Really, his main base isn't that economically important. The triads are what matters, the production capacity. If he can destroy that and destroy. If Kramer can destroy both of his triads, then that'll be it. But it looks like Kramer did not have himself set up properly for that attack, so he's gonna be... He's gonna be a bit delayed in what damage he can deal. And Ferreter now getting chrono, chronoporting, Kramer also getting weaponry. So both players are completely even in tech, but Kramer a bit ahead in economy. I think Ferreter's gonna go for chrono bombs, and I would recommend doing that myself. Just split up bases like this, attack it outright, and then attack, just divide and conquer from that. Great weapon for that. That's exactly what it's used for. And a bunch of Octo Sepi Faros coming in as well for Cron Aberrant will be likely attacking his main base, just frontal assault. Now, Ferret, on the other hand, is set himself up. He has, there's his Cron reporting. He has Spires in both triads. This is something that Cron does not have. Cron has not developed this proxy triad as well as Ferret has his own. Which means it's going to be a bit easier for Ferret to recover if anything happens. And four Faropods as well. Ferreter definitely prepared for a nice, powerful Chronoport once he gets up there. And Chronoporting back a Sepi Pod to help defend doesn't look like it's going to do too much. Nothing has come up at that point in time or that point in space. But Chron Aberrant, that's still going to be something to worry about. So he does have... Let's see here. Chron Aberrant, Well, he does... doesn't see Ferreter's Chronoporting. The Chronoporting is likely on the blue time wave, which we'll see shortly. But Chron Aberrant, I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gotten Leo class yet, actually. He has the money for it, but he has not gotten Leo class, getting a ton of Octopods instead, going for frontal assaults, opening up this expansion for himself, and he is... Oh, they did actually pause for a second from the looks of it. But that's beside the point. The point is, Ferreter is nicely prepared for a nice little uppercut, while Kron Aberrant... Well, he does have this expansion being opened up for himself, and he does have a nice defended position. He doesn't have his main base. His main base has run out, pretty much. This expansion is starting to run out. He doesn't have any other expansions, and Ferreter still managing to eat quite a lot from this expansion over in the southeast. And Ferreter, let's see, he does have a Sepipod here to defend. 
and that is helping defend against the one that chronoported back. So that leaves that will be some some defense. So he's going to be taking less damage in the unplayable past, but that's not going to be that much less damage. There wasn't much change really. So Kron Aberrant, likely not much has changed with regards to that particular attack. And Ferreter, on the other hand, getting up his own Octopods. His Pharopods have been moved somewhere. His, his Sepipods are in good position to teleport around, but not sure where his Pharopods have gone off to or if he's ultimately built them. He does have a lot of money in the bank, getting himself the legal class, so he might be getting Octoligos or Pharoligos, or possibly Sepiligos. I, I, I'm surprised I'm saying, or possibly Sepi Legos, given that they were the go-to legal class unit for a long time. And I should also point out, he has 600-600, so he could fire off those three PCMs I mentioned and deal with Kron Aberrant's entire base, but it looks like he's going to be going for a more sensitive